Alright, <clears throat> the first screencast here, I'm just going to cover some of the spreadsheet items in Google Spreadsheets uh, that we talked about in training. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get to your um, Google Docs. You can do that by typing docs.google.com in the address bar. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and click the create button here and choose the item called spreadsheet. What that that what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and uh, open up a brand new untitled spreadsheet. You can tell that it's called untitled because it says untitled right up here. Uh, we're going to click file and rename. Let's give this thing a uh, an actual name. So I'm just going to call this uh, sample gradebook. Okay. So now we know it's uh, going to be renamed, and the tab is now called Sample Gradebook. Um, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is a, called Sheet 1. We can go ahead and uh, rename this sheet by right-clicking on it. We can also add additional sheets. So I've just added a second sheet in here, similar to uh, worksheets, like in Excel. So if I go ahead and rename the first one, so I'm going to call this Period 1, and I'll call the second sheet period two. Okay, so now I have uh, two worksheets that I can toggle between. Uh, so let's say period one I have um, some students. I'll go ahead and number them. Uh, let's do four students. Okay, and um, you know, strike that. Let's not number them. Why, why bother? So I'm just going to say student Let's go with last name and first name, and we'll say assignment one, assignment two, quiz one, and test one. And then we're going to call this trimester one final. Okay, so actually next to these values, I should or next to these I should put a point value. So I'm going to say ten points for assignments. Let's do twenty points for a quiz, and I'm going to go ahead and do thirty points for a test. Okay, those are just so we can be reminded. So I'm going to go ahead and do Abbott, uh, Jim. Let's do um, I don't know uh, Brady, Marsha, um, Smith, Bubba, and uh, I don't know who is it. Let's do Jones, Mike Jones. Now let's do Susie. Okay. So I'm just going to put some random values in here, 6, 7, I don't know, 16, uh, 27. I'll just be faster for me to go up and down the columns. So let's do 9, 9, 10. Let's go ahead and do 17, 18, 19, and uh, I don't know, 34. Oh, can't do 34. Let's say they got a perfect, they got a 30. 23, and uh, maybe they didn't do so well, they got a 20. Okay? So, <clears throat> these items up here, I'm going to highlight all the items in uh, the first row. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an underline under them using the border shading tool and I'm also going to bold face them so that they stand out. So those are this is called my header row. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to average, not average, I'm going to show you guys how you get the final grade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these four assignments and then I'm going to divide them by the total number of possible points giving me the students their grades. So I've got 30, 20, 10, and 10. So that adds up to 70. So I could actually help myself out here and write 70 right there. And now I would know that uh, everything needs to be out of 70. So the first thing I want to do is add up these four 
uh, items in, in this second row. This sigma um, icon here will give you a bunch of functions. I'm going to choose sum. And when I click sum, there's going to be a cursor between the parentheses that comes up. I want to highlight 6, 7, 16, and 27 in the second row, in the, Ab in the Jim Abbott row. Um, I can press enter, and that's going to give me his total number of points. Well, that's not good enough for me right now. I actually need to do something. I need to actually divide 56 by 70. Uh, but you have to kind of follow the order of operations here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, parentheses there and a parentheses there. Um, it's because parentheses comes first in the order of operations. I'm going to go ahead and put a divide uh, symbol there. And then I'm just going to type the number 70. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm adding up everything in cells C2 through F2. So this 6, 7, the 16, and the 27. And I'm dividing it by 70. And that's going to give me a decimal number of 0 0.8. I can format these cells to show me um, this data in a percentage format. So what I did is I'm going to highlight these four cells in column G. And I'm going to choose this icon that says 1, 2, 3 right here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to choose the percentage that has um, t uh, numbers to the left of the decimal and um, a, dis a decimal in the tenth and hundredth spots for the percentage. So I'm going to choose that and now my point 0 0.8 becomes 80.00%. Uh, so now I'm going to do one other thing. There's a little itty bitty... Uh, blue box in this corner right here. I can take that and drag it down. Oops. I can drag this box down through my other um, other three rows and it's going to actually do the same function but it's going to do it based on the numbers in Marsha Brady's row, in Bubba Smith's row, and in Susie Jones' row. I should probably put an S on Susie Jones there. So um, what we've done here is we've just gotten a, f uh, a final percentage grade for these four students in period one. And then I just created a, a second spreadsheet here. You could do the same thing for your second period class uh, by copying this stuff over. Uh, and you just change the names and things. And actually, what works out nice if you do that you copy and paste it in there, you can just delete the names and then go and change the assignment values and you're already set up. So, you know, if I did like um, Skywalker, Luke, you know, Ron, Susie, uh, Brady, uh, I don't know, or Bobby Brady, and then... Um, Smith, Joan, okay, so you could just come through here and change the values, and you'll notice that as I'm changing the values, the percentages are changing uh, on the other side, which is cool, because they just update for you automatically, so um, that's periods one and periods two. The other thing that I covered in class that I'm going to cover right now was conditional formatting, the last feature I'm going to demonstrate uh, with the in this screencast is the conditional formatting portion of it. So um, I'm going to adjust my numbers here so that I can get uh, the data that I want to show up the way I want it. So I'm going to drop this test score to 15. That puts one in the 60s range. Uh, the, this one, let's make this a 9. There we go. We got above a 90, something in the 80s. Let's drop this test score to put it in the 70s. I'm going to need to lower this. There, so I've got something in the 70s, something in the 80s, something in the 90s, something in the 60s. I'm going to highlight the cells in this column, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Data, I'm sorry, Format, and I'm going to choose Conditional Formatting. In Conditional Formatting, I can add sets of rules. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Is Between. And I'm going to choose is between 0.6 and 0.699. And I'm going to make the text backgrounds on that uh, this red color. Add another rule. If anything is between 
and 0.799. I'm going to make the background color this yellow color. I'll add yet another rule. I'm going to say if it's between 0.8 and 0.899, I'm going to choose this. Uh, let's do this like blue color. And then I'm going to say uh, is greater than 0.9. I want the background color to be. Uh, let's do this purple color. Now I'm going to save all my rules. And what that's doing here is it's actually color coordinated my results. So I know that anybody that has this um, this dark pink color or red color is going to be, you know, uh, potentially failing. Uh, the, the lavender color is a passing grade, the blue is pretty good, and the, uh, you know, our average grade is uh, the yellow thing here as well. So you, you can do conditional formatting for anything um, in here. And what's cool about this is if you've actually offset your, your grades, so let's say, you know, uh, we added another assignment in here, um, and we, we redid our formulas or something like that, or someone did some extra credit and they upped their grade, if I put a 20 in there, it's going to change it immediately for me, and the conditional formatting is going to take care of uh, the color coordination there. So uh, that's uh, conditional formatting, and that's one of the other items that we covered. Uh, the last item we covered today was sorting. So somebody said, okay, let's go ahead and sort these. Um, I click this top left portion of this, and that highlights all the data in my, in my spreadsheet here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data, and I am going to sort a range. And what I have to choose here is I actually have a header row. I have a big header row. I have the last name, a first name, assignment one, assignment two, quiz one, test one, and trimester one final. So I need to designate that I do have a header row. And now it's going to ask me is how do I want to sort? Well, we sorted if I already have it. Well, I don't actually have it by last name um, alphabetically. So I could do that. Um, or I could sort by the trimester grade uh, from least to greatest. So if I sort that, all the data stays the same, but it also uh, puts my trimester one final uh, scores in ascending order. All the other data follows uh, the student. So you'll notice that I still have Jim and Abbott, Susie and Jones, Bubba and Smith. The data didn't switch um, rows and columns. It didn't get jarbled up like that. So, uh, And I did that by clicking this top left corner and then doing um, a sort range function. I'll do it again. And this time I'll sort it by last name. So now I've got Abbott, Brady, Jones, and Smith. And the scores all followed those users. So that was the last item that we covered today. Um, oh, you know, one other thing we did cover was merging cells. So let's say I wanted to merge these three cells right here. I highlight those three cells. And I choose this button right here that says Merge Cells. And now instead of having three separate cells, I have one. Um, for this particular purpose, not sure what it serves by doing that, so I'll just say uh, grades come out on uh, October 10th, 2012. I'll just put that there. And you'll notice that even if I highlight the background of it, it highlights the background of that whole cell. So, um, yeah, so that's merging. And I could also select it and it has a, an option to demerge, uh, so I could unmerge these cells by choosing um, unmerge, and now they're three separate cells again. Or I could merge them back. The other thing that you can do is you can choose a. There's a vertical merge feature, so if I selected these rows, I could also merge them vertically, and it would make one giant vertical box. So that was the items that we covered today. So. Um, Thanks for watching, and I hope that you guys get a lot of use out of this screencast. Thanks for coming today.